Hi, Chef Mark here in another episode of Cruising in the Kitchen. Today we're going to make chocolate chocolate chip cookies. And uh, I think this recipe is a very good one because a lot of times the cookies can be a little bit dry and I'll show you a couple things in this recipe that make this cookie come out nice and moist and um, a little bit different than some of the other ones that you might see. So we have the mise en place. All the stuff is ready. Once again, I suggest always putting everything out there. And this is what we need for the recipe. It makes about 16 large cookies or 12, you know, uh, 16 large cookies or like 24 to 30 smaller ones, depending on how you do it. So, 12 teaspoons of butter, half a cup of dark corn syrup, four ounces of chocolate cut up, and you want to try to keep the chocolate in chunks. I have a few small pieces in here, but I try to keep it in little half inch, quarter inch chunks. Uh, white and brown sugar, a third of a cup each. One egg white, uh, a teaspoon of vanilla, and this is a half teaspoon of baking soda and a half teaspoon of salt. And this is seven and a half ounces of flour, which is roughly a cup and a half. And this is three quarters a cup of cocoa powder. The technique here uh, is we're going to cream the butter with the sugar, which is a common technique. But one thing I really want to point out is what the butter looks like, you know, as far as the texture goes. Uh, the books, you know, the textbook says 70 degrees is roughly the temperature. Uh, this butter had to sit out all day on a cold day to even get near there. So this is what you're looking for. You don't want it, you don't want it soft and melted, you just want it pliable. And I have a thermometer here, and I know it's close to 70 because I looked a few minutes ago. And if I shoot it up, you'll see that this butter says 70. So, roughly 70 degree butter, within a few degrees, and it's helpful. And if that, the reason why I think it's important to use a thermometer for your butter at the beginning of your learning how to cook, so that, you know, later on, I can do it by texture. I know that I have to be able to mush it in this kind of manner. But until you know really what that is, it's roughly 70 degrees. So, what we want to do is cream the butter and the sugar together for a few minutes. Actually, this sugar is just that what we're going to cook the, the cookie balls with afterwards. You'll see. White and brown sugar. The brown sugar is more moist than white sugar and is another ingredient in this recipe that helps keep the cookie moist. Roughly two minutes. I'm going to scrape it down at the beginning, make sure it all gets incorporated. Let it go hard for two minutes because I want it to be light and fluffy. You really want to just get it all around the bowl, on the underneath, off the paddle. Something like that. Two minutes. We'll come back. Lighter. 
we're going to uh, scrape the bowl one more time. You really want to get the sugar in the butter as finely mixed as you possibly can. It's already getting light and fluffy. It's almost there. to melt so cold uh, right now that I don't have to worry about that but at least two minutes you want a good two minutes of that scrape down when everything even and then the liquid ingredients go in and we'll mix those in slowly so they don't get all over the place one thing I did before I put the corn syrup in here I sprayed it with a little bit of the um, like a pan like a just a, a, a pan spray so that the corn syrup will come out of this um, Last down a little bit easier. I'm still going to use the whisk um, and the spatula to get the rest of it out. I want to make sure I get it all. But it will come out, it almost pours out a lot easier because I sprayed it with a little bit of pan spray. You don't really have to do that, but it helps. A little bit of a trick of the trade. I want this fully mixed. Let's get down the pan one more time too. There we go. Let's scrape it down another time. Part of a good, good uh, making a good cookie is getting this spatula all the way around the bottom of the bowl, all the way around the side, doing everything as evenly mixed as you can. Good job so far. Okay, so it looks pretty good. At this point, dry ingredients in the chocolate. Now what we're going to do after it mixes is we're going to put it in the fridge for 30 minutes and let this batter get a little bit colder and it'll be a little bit easier to mold and make little circles and drop it right into the pot of sugar and throw it in the oven at 375. It's only going to cook for 10 or 11 minutes. Uh, this cookie comes out moist in the middle and when it cools, it will come out perfect. You definitely don't want to overcook this cookie. So, and you don't want to overmix it. We'll do the last bit of mixing by hand. Always want an evenly mixed batter without overworking it. So get as much as you can off of this. Eat the rest. Kids fight for it. And you can see that I still have a teeny bit of mixing to do. Just a few turns. And we'll throw everything nice and watch this together. I'm just putting my scraper all the way in the bottom of my spatula. And that looks good. Just enough to get it together. Not over I don't want to overwork the dough at all. So, it is very moist. And it will be a lot easier to scoop and shape once uh, it is in the refrigerator for 30 minutes. And then we will shape it. Like I said, you can make 16 large or I'm going to make probably, hopefully, 24 at least or so because I don't make them quite as big. But 16 large, which would get you on two sheet pans evenly. That's a pretty big cookie though. You'll see. Okay, we put that in the oven. 30 minutes, we'll come back and we'll scoop them, roll them, 
and bake a few off. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. I took it out of the fridge. Nice and cool, easy to work with, and scoop. So before it was mushy and now I have some substance that I can kind of get into my hand. Uh, you can use a scoop, you can use a spoon. I'm going to use a spoon and get approximately, I'm going to say tops two tablespoons each. Because they puff up and they get big. Scoop it out, quick round. Roll it in the sugar. And that 30 minutes in the uh, refrigerator is just what the cookie needed in order to be able to be handled like this. Squish just a little bit. And you do want them to be roughly the same size, so if you're not good at approximating with a spoon like that, just get yourself a, uh, a scoop of some sort. You can make them in. They come in all different sizes. But these look pretty even to me. So and I can even feel the chips inside of them. 10, 11 minutes, and when they come out of the oven, you'll notice that, uh, I'll, I'll poke them, but you'll notice that the tops are still going to be just a little bit undone, and that's because uh, they'll continue to cook out of the oven, and the chocolate uh, will harden up, and it will be perfect. If you cook it till it's dry, it will, it, will, it will turn out to be a very dry cookie at the end of it all. So we'll put these three in a 375 oven, 10, 11 minutes. And after the five minute mark, I'm going to switch it around and just turn the pan one time. We'll come back then. That was about 11 minutes in the oven. You can see the cracks. And the most important thing I think is just to put your finger there and feel the teeny bit of looseness on the cookie, which is perfectly okay. Because, like I said, it's going to continue to cook on this hot pan for a few minutes. And um, the chocolate will just get hotter as it goes. And it will be a very chewy cookie. So, I recommend leaving it for about 5-10 minutes on the tray and then you can put it on some sort of like, um, you know, rack to let the cookie cool. But certainly that's what you're looking for, the cracks and that texture. And that's a chocolate, chocolate chip cookie. So, don't forget to like and subscribe and come back again for another episode of Cruising in the Kitchen.